Abigail and Sir Stuart have elite palates and perfect taste, much better than yours. Learn about the fine nuances of finer wine on Invigorating. Soft like a kitten's loin. Oh, it's as silken as the hem of a geisha's robe. Jammier than Frodo's feet. Softer than a unicorn's mane. Oh, more vulgar than Easy E's out. Oh, hell no. We're Stevie and Josiah. A girl and a guy who happen to know a lot about <laughs> drinking. That's because we drink a lot. But we also study a lot and work a lot. We've worked at some of the best restaurants and wine shops from coast to coast. But at the end of the day, we're still just two everyday people who are thirsty. Really thirsty. We hope you are too. All right, so we're here in beautiful Napa Valley with a really, really special guest. Um, we have Marta with us. And Marta, what is it exactly that you do? I am an animal communicator and I use intuition to get in touch with animals, find out what they're feeling, what's going on with them, what's happened to them in the past, that kind of thing. And I teach people how to do this all over the world. I've written three books about it. I've been doing it for about 20 years. Ago. And what would you say to uh, people out there as far as like the importance of being able to uh, communicate uh, with your animal? Well, it's, it's really helpful to find out uh, what they need and what uh, to resolve any kind of behavior problems. It, it it's, makes it so much easier and so much quicker to resolve behavior problems. And you just have a better relationship with your animal, you know? You just have a closer, deeper relationship. So how can people out there uh, learn how to do this? The first thing you have to do is realize that it's not intellectual, it's not your mind. You go with whatever impressions come in. Those could be feelings, pictures, thoughts, sure. hunches, hits, you know. Yeah. You have to just go with it without letting your mind get in involved and start critiquing it. Why don't we just try it? I'll just tell you how to do what I call first impressions. So you close your eyes okay. and you just say, okay, as I'm concentrating on this dog, what thoughts pop into my head? What impressions? So, do you get any impressions about Toby? I do. Well, tell me what they are. He likes running. Oh, he loves to run. Yeah. What else? What other impressions do you get about him? He likes soft dog food. He does, and that's actually what he gets. Nice. He only gets soft dog food. So, I would call that a wow, which is something that you couldn't have made up, really. Right. You know? This is awesome. Isn't it cool? I feel what like an the... X-Men of sorts. <laughs> okay, and now should you do uh, Napoleon? Well, I can... See what I pick up about Napoleon, okay. so let's hold on a minute. I mean, I, I get that Napoleon really loves you too. He, he's a pretty independent spirit. Yeah. You can give me feedback as you Oh yeah, he is. I mean, he definitely has a high opinion of himself. <laughs> uh, possibly a little stuck up, maybe, yes. would be a way to describe him. <laughs> mm, absolutely. <laughs> I don't think he was well understood in his previous home. Mm -hmm. I don't think they got him at all. He may have been a bit intimidated mm -hmm. um, before you. So I just had a couple more things. Like, is there any way if I kind of like gave you a, a scenario of what Napoleon does, maybe you could help us figure out why he does it? Possibly. They're kind of weird, uh, but uh, okay. let's just go for it. Um, so the first one is, um, for whatever reason, he has this like fetish, this uncontrollable fetish for uh, dirty panties. <laughs> Is that something that maybe we could <laughs> work with? <Yeah. laughs> or figure out why? Uh, it's sort of a dog thing. Okay, so just let it's it go. A, it's a smell. Uh -huh. um, dog smell is much more uh, accurate than ours. I mean, it's much more developed. So. They're kind of like little connoisseurs of. It's like wine for dogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dirtier not, the more grand crew. Not. And then the other one is, and I don't know why either, but he almost treats uh, cat poop as if it were like a seized candy. Like, Got it. He yeah. loves and it. And guess what? Every dog is like that. Okay. If they have the chance. Okay. Like I clean out my cat box for that very reason. Because they just go to they won't like go, a they'll just piece. go for it. Yeah. yeah. So let's see if Stevie has the skills to pay the bills to figure out what wine you like. What I'm picking up from Marta is that she cares deeply about this earth, its plants, its animals, all its living things. And so I would intuit that what she'd like to drink is some 
natural, organic, or biodynamic wines. The whole organic and natural category of wine can be confusing. Like, what the heck do these terms mean and how are they any different? It all starts with a basic desire to care for our earth. The term natural wine can pretty much mean whatever you or the winemaker wants it to mean. Some people think of this as being good in the vineyard, say, eliminating new pesticides or chemicals. Others consider it more as how they make the wine in the winery, like not adding anything to the grape juice, say, preservatives, or taking anything away, through filtering, for example. There are no laws, however, stipulating what is or isn't allowed for natural wine, but it's become a pretty popular way to refer to the wines themselves. Organic, on the other hand, is really strictly regulated by the big USDA. Now, they define organic as a product that uses no pesticides, synthetic fertilizers, sewage sludge, genetically modified organisms, or ionizing radiation. Hmm. In order to call your product organic, the USD must inspect and approve it. Now, if you want to sell your wine with the organic stamp of approval, you're going to need to make sure that you pass their extensive series of tests. Make no mistake, this is a long and costly process. So just because you don't necessarily see that stamp of approval on the label, doesn't mean that the farmers aren't actually practicing organic. There's one more category to consider today, biodynamic wine. Now, if this is your first time hearing about biodynamics, don't get scared. Admittedly, there's some pretty trippy bits involved. Like, did you know that biodynamic vintners take into consideration the lunar calendar to figure out when they want to plant, prune, pick, even bottle their wines? Yep, it's true. And not only that, they use these preparations that are almost like magic potions of herbs or even manure that they bury strategically throughout the vineyard in cow horns or bladders. But this is no joke, it's serious stuff that a lot of the world's best winemakers are practicing. The whole theory was developed by a guy named Rudolf Steiner, and there are plenty of books written about it if you'd like to learn more, as well as plenty of articles debating whether or not biodynamics actually works. The bottom line that many of us have come to accept is that this kind of care and sensitivity and attention in the vineyard can't help but make for happier, healthier, better grapes. Whether or not it's a result of the poop in the horn, we really can't tell. But they tend to be pretty damn good wines. The bottom line is that quality is subjective, and you might or might not notice a difference in wines made with natural, organic, or biodynamic methods. But if you, like Marta, care about sustainability and being good to our good earth, and these are all great wines to seek out. All right, so we have two natural wines today. First one, 2009 Robert Sinski Vineyards Pinot Noir. So this is coming from Carneros. Carneros is a little AVA located in the south of Napa. The cool thing about Robert Sinski is that they are certified biodynamic, which is a huge deal. And they also happen to be one of the leading biodynamic producers in California. All right, and our next wine, 2012 Matthiasen Rosé. So this is a rosé made from Syrah coming from the Con Vineyard in Napa Valley. Cool thing about Matthiasen is that it's a family operation. So it's Steve, Jill, and their two sons that basically make this wine. The cool thing about Steve Mathiasen is that his whole mantra is do no harm. And the thing that he means by that is he likes to practice natural methods when growing grapes and when making wine, which is a really awesome thing because that just gives us more wine for us and for our kids in the future. All right, Marta, so based on Stevie's intuition and your interest, we picked natural wines. Great, that's what I prefer. Awesome, so it worked. Yes, good job, Stevie. So I just wanted to say cheers and thanks for being here. It's awesome to drink these wines with you, and we're excited about everything that you've brought us. Oh, you're so, so welcome. Cool. And cheers. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, Napoleon. Cheers, Napoleon. <laughs>